In this video, I'm going to show you how I built a simple DIY welding table using simple tools. The tools I used was a 110 volt flux core welder plugged into a regular 20 amp outlet, a four and a half inch angle grinder with a cutoff wheel, a flap disc, and a wire brush cup, all from Benchmark Abrasives, a Harbor Freight portable bandsaw on a DIY homemade stand, just a simple drill with a couple of drill bits, a hand file, and wrenches and so forth for bolting a couple of the parts together. Now this steel is one inch by two inch rectangular tubing, about an 18 gauge and it's galvanized. I picked it up for $7 for this whole pile. And uh, there's gonna be a little work to form this into the uh, DIY welding table, but the price was right. I just used that four and a half inch angle grinder from Harbor Freight and a four and a half inch cutoff wheel from Benchmark Brace to cut this salvaged material apart. And here's a look at about a third of the steel that I got out of this old steel pallet. You can see some of the parts are rusted and I've got ends where other pieces were on there where I cut them apart with the uh, cutoff wheel. And I'll just cut off the rusted parts, salvage the best pieces and the straight pieces the best that I can. And that's what I'm going to use to form the actual welding table frame. After I came up with all the measurements that I thought I needed in order to build this welding table frame, I marked it all out and then use the Harbor Freight portable bandsaw to cut all the pieces into the lengths that I needed and cut off all of the old rusty and, and uh, bent areas and pieces that, that weren't gonna be any good for this table. couple of pieces like this one here, the old rusty welds needed to be ground off of there. So again, I used a Benchmark Abrasives four and a half inch jumbo flap disc. And I really like these flap discs. They cut through this material like a hot knife through butter. And they do a pretty good job of taking off all the rust and the old welds and that sort of thing. So I got a few of those cleaned up. There's a shot of the uh, abrasive tool that I used for it. Once I got all the parts and pieces cut, this is everything I needed in order to build the frame of this welding table. Got them all lined out, pretty accurate cuts with the uh, portable bandsaw. Just here, I'm building the actual legs, and I just kind of dreamt this design up as I was going along. But as you can see, I'm taking a couple of different pieces and kind of making an L bracket or a piece of angle out of these two pieces of uh, rectangular tubing. And then I just used stitch welding down the seams. Every two or three inches or so, I'd, I'd put about a one inch, two inch long weld in order to stick these pieces together. Now this was quite a bit of welding for what it was, but I think that a couple of benefits was one, the material was basically free, almost free. And this is really going to add a lot of strength to the frame of this welding table. I got all four table legs built. This is kind of how they came out and what they look like. Now 
Now this is where I'm making two end pieces for the table. The width of this is about 19 inches and the table is going to be 36 inches off of the floor. And so far I'm just tacking everything together so I can try to get this thing as square as possible. As you can see I'm building this on the floor of my garage which is not all that level but it's the most level spot I have to do this. Hopefully when I finish this table, I'll have a much flatter, more level spot to build the items like this. And since I'm using the flux core wire, there's a lot of brushing to clean up these welds. That's one of the drawbacks of the flux core wire, but it really does a good job of uh, welding these pieces together. Now here I'm welding on one of the lengthwise cross pieces. And if I remember right, those were 43 inches in length. There's going to be four of those for the framework for the table. I'm just spot welding all this together until I actually get the frame built. And then I'll go back and fully weld the whole thing out. Now the way this frame goes together, if you get good square cuts with the uh, portable bandsaw or whatever tool you use to cut the uh, pieces out with, it goes together pretty square if you just get everything pressed up tight with a good fit. And that also helps with the weld with the flux core wire on this thin material. You really need a good tight joint so you don't blow through the thin wall tubing. So I'm putting in some additional cross braces. This is going to allow that tabletop piece sit on there. And the biggest area of unsupported material is going to be 17 inches, which is the width of this frame. And I think using this method is going to give that thin top plenty of support so that it holds its levelness and straightness. But time will tell. This is all an experiment. And then I'm putting cross braces on the bottom, same as I did on the top piece, because I'm going to have a, a storage shelf along the bottom here. And about a 12 inch distance between that storage shelf and the floor, so that I can get my foot pedal underneath this table without having any problems with the cord or the foot pedal. Then it was time to go ahead and fully weld out all of these welds on this table. And there's a lot of cleanup with the brush and a wire wheel because it is flux core wire. But again, the wire wheel does a really good job of cleaning that up. And almost 100% of the spatter from the welds just came right off with the wire wheel. Now, since this is galvanized material, the tubing is, I weld this outside with a little bit of a breeze. That way it keeps those fumes and that hazardous smoke out of your lungs and you don't breathe that in. And during all of this welding, I never did experience any sickness from the zinc burning off of this galvanized steel. So you just got to be smart about how you're welding it if you're welding this galvanized stuff and make sure that you're outside, maybe wear a respirator, use a fan, um, or all of the above. But uh, you need to think about that and plan for it so that you can weld it successfully without getting sick. Next, I took a piece of 1 8 inch scrap. This is an old, broken stabilizer jack off of an RV. And I cut out four of these plates to use as the feet or the mounts on the bottom of the legs for the swivel casters. I drilled the holes in the caster mounts with these Benchmark Abrasives drill bits. They have a real nice 29 piece or 30 piece kit if you're looking for a nice set of drill bits, I'll leave the link for these in the description.
Here I'm going to tack weld the nuts for the swivel mounts onto the foot plates and that way all I have to do is insert the bolt and tighten it down and the casters will be installed. picked up four of these caster wheels off of Amazon. I'll leave a link for these in the description. They're real nice. I, I really think they'll work out well for this table and they're adjustable so you can adjust for an unlevel floor and then lift the little foot and then roll them around your shop wherever you need to put your table. Real handy. Here's a little jig that I made up for mounting these tabs to the top rails of the table frame and these will have a hole drilled in them so I can mount the table top with six countersunk bolts. I used 1 16th inch plate for the shelf and here's how I cut out the corners to where it will just fit in there and just set on the table. I don't have to bolt it down or weld it or anything. I used some 1 8th inch 1 and a quarter inch straps and welded them to the sides of the table and this will house two grinders that I can just hang on the edge of the table. I can hang at least two grinders for each side. If you enjoyed this video, click the link on the screen now for another one of my build videos, and we'll see you over there. Also, a big thanks to Benchmark Abrasives for sponsoring this build.